Hi there, this is Steven Rosell, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover part two of a demo series around uh, the basics of Arnold for somebody that maybe is familiar with Maya already, but is somewhat new to Arnold. Uh, and I'm breaking this up into a series. The first part was all around lighting. So this is kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, and this is kind of where we left off. We're not going to go into some shader basics. We'll do other demos around things like the render layer system, creating uh, Arnold AOVs or render passes, and a few other things along the way. For starters, though, I want to point out one thing. Uh, in the previous demo, I had inadvertently left color management off. So uh, color management is a global setting that you can actually set at the file level. Uh, and by mistake, I'd actually turn that off. Uh, you can see when I enable that, it will color manage everything in Maya uh, based on the settings that you give it. And we're not going to get into the details here, but you can set things like your render space uh, and your view transforms uh, independently. We'll get more into that later, but the main thing to point out here is that the color management system is now used by Arnold. So Arnold will take advantage of the color management settings, and you can actually see the effects of that in the render view. So let's actually turn that on, and then we'll go in and start to uh, create some shaders. So right now what you're seeing is some basic shading on a very, very generic Lambert material. So what I want to do is actually come in here and start to assign some new materials. So I will start by grabbing everything that is kind of associated with the body of the car. And instead of uh, you know using the default Lambert, I'm actually going to right click and I will go into Assign New Material. In here, you'll see I've got all my kind of standard Maya uh, shaders. So I've got, you know, Blend, Fong, Lambert, the old school shaders that have been around forever. Arnold has its own set of shaders, which is here at the bottom. And each of these does very specific things. So there's one in here for rendering wireframe. There's another one for rendering hair. There's another one for rendering uh, things like volumetrics or clouds. The most common is going to be the AI standard uh, surface shader. So if I apply the AI standard surface shader, that is more or less kind of the Swiss army knife of shaders. You can create effects ranging from glass to plastic to rubber. Uh, you can even create skin. Essentially anything, uh, almost anything can be rendered with this. So for starters, uh, I'll just talk about some basic parameters. Uh, we have a few basic parameters in here that you're going to want to deal with. One, of course, is just the base color. So obviously, you know, if I want to uh, have a blue car, I set that to blue. Uh, and then I've got a, uh, a roughness attribute that's associated with the diffuse. So if I bump that up or bump that down, you can see kind of how that affects the underlying uh, diffuse color. Uh, and then I've also got uh, a metalness attribute. A metalness attribute is going to make this more or less metallic. So if I bump that all the way up, I've got a pretty metallic looking object. Now I also have a specularity. Specularity will affect not only the specular highlight itself, where I can actually eliminate the specularity altogether, but it also affects the underlying reflection. So there's reflection associated with this. I have a roughness with that reflection uh, that also affects uh, the roughness of the specular highlight. So you can see as I dial up that roughness, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of softening the effect of that highlight. If I turn that all the way off, then I get this really crisp, sharp, specular highlight. And that translates down to reflections as well. Transmission is basically a uh, fancy way of saying transparency. Uh, so this is, uh, has everything to do with anything that is transparent, whether it's glass or, or something semi-transparent. Uh, subsurface is anything having to do with light penetrating the surface, uh, like skin or like vegetation, uh, where you have kind of a scattering of light under the surface. Coat is a secondary layer of color, uh, and the secondary layer of color works kind of like a clear coat. So if I apply a green to that and I add uh, the weight, you can see how that affects uh, the, the kind of composite uh, with the underlying diffuse, and you can kind of see how that blends in and out. So this would allow you to create kind of secondary color effects uh, or, or layered effects like uh, some kind of a laminate or an oil sheen or something like a clear coat. And then lastly, emission will work uh, as though uh, it's a, a lit object. So it basically is the equivalent of uh, kind of a, an ambient um, or an incandescent rather attribute on the, on the old legacy shaders. So with all that said, let's go in and start to tweak uh, some of this. So I can actually go into the uh, turntable and then I'll right click and apply a material. Now I've got an Arnold uh, standard shader, AI standard shader as part of my uh, 
favorites now so I can get to it more quickly. And I'm going to start by dialing in the effect of this. Right now I have the color which is really bright and washed out. I'm going to dial that down to a fairly dark color. And as you can see, you can start to see the, the result in the viewport. I get some reflection. As I said, if I dial down specularity, I can actually not only remove the specular highlight, but also the reflection. Oh, and then I have a roughness, by the way. Roughness, if I turn it all the way down, it's going to give me almost like a glass-like surface. If I turn roughness uh, all the way up, it's going to basically kind of fade that out. And then if I add it somewhere in the middle, kind of in the lower range, I can still get reflection, but you can see here that I'm getting kind of a muted, kind of uh, almost like a frosted reflection. So there we go. Uh, now let's go in and start to uh, tweak some other parameters. So I've got my blue car. Let's say that I want to make this red. Obviously, I can just um, grab the material for the car itself and start to tweak this directly uh, by, you know, playing with the parameters I showed you before, but I've also got some presets that I can take advantage of. So I can come in here and I can set, for instance, my presets to be something uh, like gold. And if I set this to gold, then my car, of course, will turn gold. And now I've got a gold car, which looks pretty awesome. But I probably don't really want a gold car. I probably want something that is more of a kind of enamel, kind of a, a car-like paint. So I'm going to go in here to my car paint section, and I've got two of these. I've got a base car paint, which is just kind of the default, uh, and then I've got another one, uh, which is kind of a, a metallic version of that. So if I switch over into metallic, now you can see the, the end result here. And I'm noticing my lights are a little bit uh, off, so I'm going to go in and grab uh, these lights and dial down their exposure a bit. Let's put that at about uh, 10 or so, and then I'll grab that kind of backlight and I'll bring that down to about nine or something like that. All right, so that's a little bit better. So now let's go back to the uh, Arnold uh, material here and I'll start to blend these together. So right now I've got a metallic car paint and let's say I wanted to blend that now with the regular car paint. So I can say I want to blend 75% of the regular car paint and now I'm getting a kind of a composite of the two shader presets. So what you can also do is you can go in and customize these. So let's say I want this to be kind of a nice bright red, and then I want kind of a candy apple effect. So I'll dial this into kind of a warm specular highlight. I'll get the candy apple effect that I'm kind of going for. And now I can save this out. So I can just say save preset, and I'm going to call this uh, candy apple car. And now at any point I can come in here and I can access that custom preset. So I can come in and I can just apply candy apple car and then that will load those parameters that I had customized uh, so that I can start from something as opposed to starting uh, from scratch. So let's continue along this path and we'll start to modify some of the other parameters. So let's go in here or rather some of the other objects. Let's grab the wheels, and the wheels are actually uh, part of a larger group. I'm actually I'm using uh, selection sets or just regular sets rather over here um, where I can basically just go in and select all the members. That gives me all the, the objects that are associated with the wheel. Once again, I'll just right click. I'll come in here and I'll assign my favorites, AI standard surface shader. And now we'll start to uh, add uh, more of a kind of a wheel look to this. So what I want to do is switch over into a different kind of material here, and I'll start with something like brush metal. Now when I apply the brush metal, then I get exactly that. I get this kind of darker kind of brush metal effect, and we'll just give that a second to refine in the viewport, or uh, rather in the render view. Uh, but let's say I want a little color to that. I can either go in and kind of manually start to tweak my colors, or I can take an existing preset, like copper maybe, and I can blend in, say, 25% copper, and that's going to give me a mix of the kind of default brush metal look and the copper look. So let's go in here and do a few more updates. I'm going to grab everything that's associated with the tires uh, and a couple of other things that are similar. And I want to apply just a rubber material to this. So I'm going to go in and assign my AI standard surface shader. Once again, uh, that loads up automatically. I'll switch into uh, my presets, and I'm going to choose the rubber preset and apply that. And I get kind of the basic look of rubber. But what I notice right off the bat is that 
it's uh, it's a little bit light. Now you can also go in and you can do some basic uh, gamma and exposure corrections in the uh, render view as well as in the viewport. So you can actually go in and set your exposure and gamma directly from with either of these uh, within these and match them. So for instance, if I wanted to set my gamma to be something like 1.2 in the Arnold render view, then I can also go in and I can set that same value of 1.2 in the my view and that will correct or modify the, the gamma for both. So let's go in and actually um, modify this a little bit more at the shader level because I can see here that the tire now is much, much too bright. So uh, I'm actually going to go in and uh, dial this down. Actually, I might have undone that. Let's set this back to rubber. There we go. I accidentally undid that effect. Uh, let's dial this in a little bit and we're going to add a nice, nice dark kind of color uh, for the, the rubber effect. Uh, so you can use kind of the gamma and the exposure correction just to kind of fine tune your, your shaders. And then you know, when you're done, uh, you can actually go in and just reset that to kind of the default. So let's pull back a little bit and we'll make a few other changes. One thing that I want to change is the chrome and the, uh, the handle here. So if I take a look at the handle, uh, I want that to be a nice, nice, shiny, highly reflective surface. So I'm going to grab all of the trim pieces. I'll select those. Then I'll just right click in here once again. I'll just create my standard surface shader and I've got a very basic preset that does exactly what I need. I set that to Chrome and then bam, it's gonna render out Chrome. So now that Chrome is gonna be associated with a lot of the door trim and parts and pieces that I want to be kind of highly glossy how or rather highly reflective. So let's pull back a little bit and there's a couple more things that I wanna change. Uh, one of which is the glass. So I wanna go in and uh, add some transparency to the glass. So for starters, uh, I want to go in and just assign a glass material. So I'll just once again add my standard surface shader. Uh, and then as with my other examples here, I've got a couple of presets that give me different types of glass, a frosted and a regular glass. So I'll just start with uh, the regular glass. And that's going to give me the basic parameters for glass, but the transmission is actually not enabled. It's actually turned all the way down. So in order to see the actual transparency, I have to actually turn on the transmission. Uh, and I need to bump that weight up to a much higher value. Now, one thing to point out is that in order to use transparency or, or transmission on your objects, you do have to enable it at the shape level. So uh, one thing I might want to do here is start to tweak the interior because it's a little, uh, it's that generic gray. So I'm actually going to go in here with the interior, select that. Uh, once again, I'll just create a standard surface shader. I'll just use my favorites here and pretty quickly I can go in and I can set something uh, that is appropriate. So I can start to experiment here. So maybe I want something like ceramic. Let's just see what that looks like. I pull in and I can see how it's very shiny. Obviously ceramic is kind of glossy. I don't want that. So I'll choose something instead like a clay. And the clay is going to give me more of a kind of a flat, kind of a soft look. Color is off, obviously. So um, here I can just start to tweak the color, you know, either manually just by dialing that into kind of a tan, or I've actually got one saved here in my swatch. Um, so uh, that gives me the tan I'm looking for. Now the glass, I might want to tweak. Now one thing you can do is you can, of course, select the geometry directly from the viewport, and then that will load the shape, and then you have to switch over to the material. Uh, or you can just click directly in the render view, and based on the pixel that you click on, you can actually select the shader. So here, if I click here on the red, then it's going to select the red car shader. If I click here on the black, it's going to select that kind of rubber plastic shader. If I click on the glass, uh, based on that pixel, it's going to select the glass shader. And here I might want to add a little specular color so I can go in and you know maybe add a little bit of a kind of an aqua color, but not quite that much, just a little bit of an aqua tint, just so that I look like I have kind of a tint kind of not actually reflecting sky, but just kind of giving it that look. So let's pull back a little bit and then we can start to see uh, how this looks overall. And that starts to look pretty good as I you know, start to kind of settle this into place. We'll just let that progressively refine. And I bumped the light down a little too much earlier. I might want to just tweak that a little bit more, uh, bump that front light up uh, slightly. And I'll just kind of eyeball that until I get something I'm content with, maybe bump it up to close to 11. So we'll let that settle in. But in general, as you can see, this uh, is it's 
a pretty quick workflow just from getting to uh, essentially, you know, nothing to uh, a finished render in a, in a matter of a minute. So it's super simple to work with and uh, easy to kind of get started. Uh, you don't have to start from scratch. Like I said, you can always start from something and kind of build up from there. Uh, you do have quality settings associated with each one of these particular material groups, and we'll talk about that in a different demo. So I haven't really gotten too much into actual quality and performance yet, but we'll get into that in, in a different demo. But for now, that should get you started with just some shader basics. All right, thanks for your time.